wind blows from beyond the horizon. A new danger is coming on the tides. And the one who might stop this ruin, trapped for all forever in the sea of the damned. Now to save the pirate life, you must start by saving the life of one. Oh, didn't realize we had company. Captain Jack Sparrow. But I suspect you already knew that. Because of the treasure Jack stole, a darkness followed him here. And if it's not stopped, this world will sink into shadow. This sea holds many secrets. A new body at last. All I can do is show you the way. From what I hear of this so-called Sea of Thieves, it's nothing but cursed crews, bloodthirsty mermaids, a legion of dead, angry pirates. Ah, oh, yes. And now, one Davy Jones. Hello! I believe that now is the perfect time to use these cannons. A world without the eternal abyss. It's a world that refuses to face the truth. Nothing lasts forever. Destroy them! I don't suppose, by chance, there's a second one of those? <laughs> the Sea of Thieves, eh? Bring me that horizon. Hey everyone, welcome to the Sea of Thieves A Pirate's Life Showcase. We are so excited and proud to give you a glimpse into how we brought Jack Sparrow into our world, an early look at some of those first couple of tales, as well as some behind the scenes interviews with members of the development team, just to show you how amazing it's been to work on this and how excited everyone is to have had this opportunity. And Sea of Thieves has never been in a better place. We've had over 20 million people play. We've been adding content for over three years. So whether you've been on that journey with us or, or you're new to the adventure, and this is the first time you're experiencing Sea of Thieves, there's never been a better time to play it. We're just really excited. Anyway. Let's get on with the show. As part of expanding our game, the boundaries of the world and the types of experiences you can have, we're bringing Sea of Thieves A Pirate's Life. This features five tall tales that tell this epic, original story where you get to crew up with Captain Jack Sparrow and go on an adventure to save the pirate's life in the Sea of Thieves. So the idea is that Captain Jack Sparrow has stolen the greatest pirate treasure of all time, a golden key to other lands. It possesses true freedom. Jack has used this treasure to cross his precious horizon and he's found the pirate world of Sea of Thieves. Following in his wake is Davy Jones. And Davy Jones has also discovered this pirate world, finding that the pirate's life is somewhat different here. He has no dominion over those waves, and he doesn't control the pirates' life and their ability to return back from the land of the dead. And this threatens the pirates' life in the Sea of Thieves. And as part of this story, you get to work with Captain Jack to save the pirates' life. Well, I believe that now is the perfect time to use these cannons. So a big part of the story of Sea of Thieves A Pirate's Life is giving players the chance to see brand new locations for the very first time. Exploring the supernatural realm of the Sea of the Damned and also the underwater world of the Sunken Kingdom. So part of these new adventures is encountering new creatures in the Sea of Thieves world. Creatures like Sirens, they're all around you and engage you in new ways. Phantom Pirates, 
that have been abandoned in the Sea of the Damned. There's also ocean crawlers, crustacean-like creatures that work together as a crew. We're also introducing new mechanics, like the Trident of Dark Tides. You can wield it as part of those tall tales, but also use it to engage with content that's already there in Sea of Thieves, like taking it to a skeleton fort or engaging other ships with this new tool. I don't suppose, by chance, there's a second one of those? So each tall tale brings with it a set of rewards that are themed to that tale. There's also parts of the Caribbean themed content within Air Pirate Emporium. So we love the idea of players being able to cosplay as Jack Sparrow, to cosplay as the crew of the Black Pearl, to have adventures and have the, have the prison dock with the keys in his mouth as a pet that you can have in the world. And also being able to deck out your ship in new cosmetics that feel like they're inspired by the legend of those iconic ships from the parts of the Caribbean universe. You can have the ship set that feels like it's been inspired by the legends of those ships coming to the Sea of Thieves world. We're really looking forward to how players can role play using these new ways to express themselves. So I'll never forget that first meeting that we had with Disney. I think we waited till we were around the corner, but then we were literally like arms over each other's shoulders, like kind of like, we're going to do something special here. This is going to be amazing. For this new Pirates of the Caribbean story, we were excited to work with Rare as they are genuine fans of this world and these characters. And I remember standing kind of the first moment alone, looking into the mirror, and it's ever so weird, almost talking to myself of, did that just happen? With Rare, we immediately knew we had found a team that was up to the challenge of taking what fans love about Pirates of the Caribbean from the theme park attraction and the films and building something new. They looked at our game, they recognised the, the tone and the humour and, and the kind of the fantastical nature of it and everything and I think they saw a, like a kindred spirit I guess. We started by just having fun, imagining the possibilities and pushing each other in new directions. And I think one of the amazing moments has been sharing that first initial creative pitch for where we could potentially take the story with the team and seeing that passion and how inspired that the team was to now it's a reality. It was authentic to Pirates of the Caribbean while staying true to the Sea of Thieves. Everything from the original design documents to the visual treatments to what fans are going to experience when they get to play this. We got to kind of go on all the rides. We got to go on Pirates of the Caribbean twice in a row, which was just so cool for me to see some of the images from Mike's kind of creative proposal, which showed actually how not just the films were going to be a focal point of this collaboration, but also the ride. I've been working at games at Disney for over 25 years, and I've been coming to Disneyland my entire life. I've probably been on this ride hundreds, maybe thousands of times. It's my favorite ride. This idea that we could put this creative twist on these familiar locations that maybe you've seen on the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. The idea of representing this almost director's cut of the attraction experience. You feel like you're right there in that town or in that grotto. Even the audio really trying to give you those really powerful, nostalgic, magical moments where you get these awesome callbacks. We looked at Pirates of the Caribbean as a real kind of example of the, the freedom of the pirate's life, the being the pirate you want to be, of humour, of a really great range of kind of characters and, and legendary characters as well. And, and when we looked at Sea of Thieves, we wanted to take a lot of that into our game. We knew we had to find a strong narrative and clear character motivation to bring Jack Sparrow into this world. Freedom means everything to Jack, which makes the Sea of Thieves a perfect fit but his unpredictable actions make him a great character to spark the adventure. Jack Sparrow talks so much about the freedom of the pirate's life and the freedom to have your adventures. So the idea that he would want to be in the Sea of Thieves world and want to play his part of saving it was a really kind of powerful idea. The first time Jack kind of interacts with the ferryman, who is a character from our world, like on the Ferry of the Damned, and they're kind of bantering back and forth and Jack in the way that he is and his character and the humour. For me, that moment, I was like, wow. That's Captain Jack Sparrow, mate. And I think you may be overreacting just a smidge. I know the true worth of what I possess, and I intend to keep it quite safe. Now, I can see you're very busy and very grumpy, so we'll just be on our way. The story that we've created in Sea of Thieves A Pirate's Life, now it's really come from the heart. 
Now we've really tried to tap into not only some of the the feeling of the iconic set pieces that you see in the movies, but really the deeper meaning of what it means to be a pirate and what the enduring kind of appeal of pirates is. The first moment you, you see kind of characters from our world, characters from their world talking, it's like a magic moment and again it just fits. Nothing we can do can undersell how cool this update is going to be. Rare has a genuine love of the franchise and the characters, the worlds and the stories and they understand what makes them special. This is what has made this so amazing. They bring that authenticity to every conversation we have and you're going to see it in the game when you get to play. We had these core characters and assets that people already knew and loved and our job was to visualize them into the Sea of Thieves and make them feel like they're part of our world. Making sure it's an engaging challenge and adventure for our existing players but also something that we hope a lot of new players and people new to Sea of Thieves are going to come in and really enjoy and want to get all the way through. My favourite bit about that is the challenge that you then put on yourself. Can we bring these really well-known characters into Sea of Thieves in a way that still feels natural, that still feels playful and still gives players those kind of shared experience moments that we've always wanted them to feel. It's such a great addition having Jack Sparrow because not all players play Sea of Thieves in a big crew with other players. Some players feel more comfortable playing on a solo ship on their own, but these players, when playing A Pirate's Life, they'll have Jack Sparrow aboard the cannons whilst they're sailing the ship, which is just such a great experience. We actually got one of the stunt doubles from one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies to come to the studio, full makeup, full costume, and get to act out some of these major moments in their story. And just that encyclopedia of knowledge that this wonderful actor had really helped bring Jack to life, right down to the mannerisms, the facial expressions, the way he says certain words and how he, how he carries himself. Getting Jack right was absolutely key to this story. All of the characters that you see are part of this story are either our own team, I even acted out one of the scenes myself, it was a lot of fun, or it's Jack Sparrow, the stunt double, acting out some of these scenes to ensure that it really feels like that character. If we can get him right, and if we can develop the pipeline for him, then hopefully it will go much, much easier for all the other characters. He can fight against Davy Jones's ghost ships, as well as the siren statues. He'll tell you when your resources are on a law, and you can find him around the ship where you can go and take selfies with him. We had to make tools that would allow the animation, the content teams, the audio team to give you that cinematic experience. So there's a lot of different ways that we can do it, but it, the main thing is that we just make it constantly like exciting point here, area of interest there, so that players feel like they're making progress. So we use contrasting colour, which goes against the palette of the rest of the environment, just to highlight key areas of interest and gently guide players we'll dress doorways, we'll use assets as leading lines just to again help guide the player's eyes to their objective. And there's also kind of cheekier ways we can do it whereby a player can drop down into an area that they then can't get out of to go back on themselves. As with all of our Tall Tales, players have a quest book in their inventory when they start the Tall Tale, which will always give them guidance on where they should be going and what they should be doing. So we have five quest books and, well, this is essentially one book where the castaway writes down the story. And there are also checkpoints at various points along the Tall Tale. So if you do complete part of it and then for whatever reason you want to come back to it in a later session, there's a checkpoint to allow you to pick up your adventure just where you left off. We've been able to do it in a really authentic way, um, paying homage to the Pirates of the Caribbean IP, what it feels like to be a Sea of Thieves player in the really physical, playful world that we've built, and also paying homage to the Disneyland ride and park in general, which have inspired a ton of the design team, I know, and probably much wider around Rare, in terms of the level design and the way you move through an environment. So the Tunnels of the Damned is this area that connects the Sea of Thieves main world to the Sea of Damned. So it gives you the ability to move from the main world to wherever you want to go. Only that crew is inside that new world, which means that we have a lot more levers as creators to make sure that their experience is unharmed by other players and all the kind of cinematic beats of when we want things to happen all work and play out exactly as we want them to. So it has the possibility 
for us to link the Sea of Thieves world with whatever we want. My favorite part has been working together with the team on developing the sirens. And I absolutely love how the team brought them together because they are elegant. They are like these shadows in the dark that come to hunt you. But then when they get in your face, they're like super creepy. One of the things we're really proud of with the siren statues is that when you destroy them, they do this incredible destruction effect. It's like nothing you've seen in Sea of Thieves before ever. So you get this huge sense of achievement when you're doing it. It feels like the, the new worlds that we've put in, the Sunken Kingdom and the Sea of the Dam both, they are so cinematic. Uh, the way we approach this, we learned a lot from how movies like Pirates of the Caribbean do their framing and everything, that sort of grandiose feeling you get in the movies. We wanted to bring that to the game. When we started developing the visual aspect uh, of the world, we immediately started thinking of very small objects, even things like flora and the, the sky and the sea. What would this look like? I was quite taking a look at Spanish colonial architecture with uh, very intricate arches. We had the terracotta tiles and brickwork and stonework, also plaster lots of new materials that I got to explore. We actually found creatively that we pushed our art style outside of our own boundaries. And it's really cool because going forward, we found that there's things in the Sea of Thieves now that we wouldn't have envisioned before. This world is mainly a limbo constitute of memories of pirates, of buildings, of their ships, of their adventures. It's a memory of what used to be, of what they used to be. And the end result is this magical, beautiful world with like lots of coral and colors but equally creepy, dangerous, and almost a bit dark. Destroy them! So when you dive down from your boat, you actually hear a rendition of He Shall Not Be Returning, which is uh, a song that Robin wrote in the Seabound Soul update and it's meant to be that very alluring sound, a siren singing towards you, pulling you into the Sunken Kingdom. With uh, places like Pirate's Grotto and Sailor's Grave, we was staying sort of fairly faithful to Yoho, Pirate's Life, the tune. When you sort of get out into Sailor's Grave, we wanted to sort of take something just sort of a bit more sort of laid back and a bit more ambient almost with it, but still sort of keep keying off that melody. What we actually did do is obviously listen to the films, watch the films and try and bring Sea of Thieves into that massive Hollywood score. Ocean Callers we went for a more woodwind style which pluckers around every now and then. Sirens obviously we went for vocals. And with the Phantoms, we actually went for a little bit more synthy, a little bit more ambient, and drones, which sits really nicely underneath everything else. This is a, a nickel harper, which we use quite a lot in Sea of Thieves. You have these, these keys that you, you sort of go chromatically that you use to play the notes. Playing with a bow, you can... The character that you made that initially was just, you know, an asset name in an Excel sheet is now when it is placed into the world and then you get the voiceover lines on it and the animation on it and, and, and the lighting is correct and the environment and music comes in and all those things, then it's very much a case of that the result is more than the sum of its parts. And seeing everything together from the concept to then the model, the environment, the VFX, the animation. It's been an absolute fantastic experience. Really enjoyed it. That moment when you're in the heavy dark seas and you're in the middle of a battle, you, you just look to the left and Jack Sparrow is standing next to you, firing at the same targets as you. The music's there, he's there, and it, it's, it's like nothing. I've ever played before. It really is something quite special. In this first tale of the Sea of Thieves of Pirate's Life, 
you get thrust straight into the story, adventuring into the Sea of the Damned. This supernatural realm where pirate dreams and nightmares take on a physical reality. As part of adventuring in this tale, you'll see haunted grotto caves and the shipwrecked town of Sailor's Grave as you try and find Captain Jack Sparrow. Your story begins at the mysterious castaway, this new character that's come to the Sea of Thieves world and has made camp at all the outposts. And she's the gateway to all of these stories. So the Sea of the Damned is a place where our players have been before in the guise of being aboard the Ferry of the Dam when they die before their return to the land of the living. But in this tale, they get to go into the haunted regions of the Sea of the Damned and explore new locations for themselves. No fear have ye of evil curses, says you. Uh, <laughs> properly warned ye be, says I. Who knows when that evil curse will strike the greedy beholders of this bewitched treasure? Dead men tell no tale. You'll explore through haunted grotto caves, hearing all these remnants of the past and these ghostly whispers, seeing all these dark deeds of pirates. Set closer together and keep your ruddy hands in the that be the best way to repel borders. And mark well the words, mateys. Dead men tell no tales. <laughs> Until eventually you emerge into Sailor's Grave, this shipwrecked town where damned sailors await rescue from the ferryman. And this is a fully realized location full of these shipwrecked areas where there's a tavern, there's a gambling den, lots of lore reveals, lots of secrets to find. So even though players have got the freedom to continue that story on their quest to find Jack Sparrow, there's lots of things to explore within that location, lots of little moments to discover. If you follow the trail, there's also a reveal of a very special ship. There's an awesome Easter egg to find. I won't spoil it, but I think it will really delight our players. And on this epic journey through this new world, you'll find a way to reignite this huge stone lighthouse, finding a way to summon the Ferry of the Damned. And as part of that journey, you'll eventually find a way to reach Captain Jack Sparrow. I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Though, since you came here to rescue me, you probably knew that already. And you must have heard tell of my heroic journey to acquire this, the greatest pirate treasure of all. So we really wanted to introduce a character in Sailor's Grave, the Cursed Captain. This is a character you carry in the palm of your hand as he's talking to you, and he gives you a tour of Sailor's Grave, he can help you find some of the secrets in the town, but he also helps you on your quest to reach Captain Jack Sparrow. We've a long journey ahead, and I've yet to find me sea legs. You can play shanties for him, you can leave him behind, you can dance in front of him, and he'll comment on all of your actions. So he's essentially this quintessential pirate captain with all the kind of one-liners and all the references to kind of pirate lore. He brings that to life in Sea of Thieves for the first time. This takes me back. Cards, dice, pitch the pistol. I don't recommend playing that last one with your loved ones. Big surprises early on in our story is the reveal that not only is Jack Sparrow in our world, but Davy Jones has followed him. You think you're there to release Jack Sparrow from being held captive from the Ferry of the Damned, but it's exactly what Davy Jones wants. So I won't spoil it too much, but Davy Jones shows up right at the start of their story, and you have this awesome cinematic moment with Jack as you defend the ferry. Even from the very first pitch for Sea of Thieves of Pirates Life, that moment where you first encountered Jack Sparrow was just one of those electrifying moments where, for the first time, you're seeing this beloved, iconic character in the Sea of Thieves world. For the first time, you get to live your own 
parts of the Caribbean adventure in Sea of Thieves. So now we're going to take a look at the second tale in the five tales of a pirate's life. Players are diving deep into the Sunken Kingdom in search of Jack Sparrow's compass, which was still aboard the Black Pearl when it was attacked. The compass is the key to what players will need to save the Sea of Thieves. So players will be diving deeper than they've ever been able to dive before into the Sunken Kingdom. And this is the home and the stronghold of the Sirens. you'll see a siren shrine, which is a smaller building, but also the siren citadel, which is guarded and home to the stronghold of the sirens. Players will also venture inside these siren structures, which have been built from coral and also the ruins of pirate ships. Sirens do drag these ships into the citadel using these chains and then break them apart and use them to reinforce their structures and also as methods of traversal which you'll see throughout the tale as well for the ocean crawlers that are in service to them so they really look and feel nothing like you've seen in Sea of Thieves before. Players will come across these siren statues that are harnessing the power of siren song. And by interacting with these statues and causing them to sing in different configurations, players can enact change using water in the environment. So for example, you may be able to play a rising note of song that causes a giant stone face to open and water to cascade out into the environment, raising you up and allowing you to swim to areas that you couldn't get to before. We created a sort of breadcrumb trail of debris that players can follow through the darkness and the gloom in order to get that perfect moment where you see the Black Pearl. But of course, even though you're seeing the Black Pearl, it's also a very melancholy moment because it's chained. You know, the ship of freedom and everything that that represents is chained at the bottom of the ocean floor, about to be dragged into this siren citadel. With Sirens, we knew we wanted to go really deep on making them feel really fluid, really intelligent, really majestic and beautiful creatures, but at the same time terrible and frightening. So one of the core things that we first set out to do in Prototype was actually how they move. And we have a system behind the scenes that allows the Sirens to move in a really beautiful way through the 3D environment. There are two types of Sirens. The base Sirens, they will have a scratch attack where they can come towards you and attack you really ferociously but at the same time they can also back off they will fire a note of song over to you the sirens and the ocean crawlers all have this mysterious gem in the center of their chest and the sirens are able to use the power of that to create a sphere around them it will damage players but will heal themselves and any other sirens that are nearby at the same time and then a step up you also have siren leaders so these are easily identifiable by the fact that they carry the trident of dark tides and they will fire this trident at you and they'll also still come in close and attack you but they'll do so with the trident and again they're able to heal themselves but their gem is a little bit more powerful With the ocean crawlers, they're a new land-based threat. You will find them throughout the tales, but you'll also find them whilst just adventuring on islands in Sea of Thieves. And there are three completely brand new, unique AI enemy types. So you have the crab ocean crawler. So this is the really big ocean crawler that will come towards you and unleash a devastating claw pummel attack. You have the electric. This ocean crawler will fire electric based attacks at you. It will dash around lightning fast. It can also though cast an electric shield around the other ocean crawlers, meaning that you need to back off because if you get too close to an electric shielded ocean crawlers, when damage is dealt to them, the lightning will actually chain to you and anyone else nearby and you'll take damage from that. 
And then we have the hermit who uses spores. They're always kind of pouring out of its mouth. And if you get too close, it will breathe those spores on you and poison you. But it can also burrow into the ground and these kind of cracks will appear in the ground. When they burst out, they'll do damage to you. They can also run and charge at you in a really ferocious attack as well. The Trident of Dark Tides is a brand new weapon that players will come across as part of their adventures in a pirate's life. You can also find it scattered throughout the world of the Sea of Thieves. One of the challenges to players when they're adventuring underwater is managing their air. And we wanted to deliver a way for players to understand that and be able to get their air back so that they can adventure for longer in a way that's really intuitive. So we have these plants underwater that are really strikingly obvious. Um, they have bubbles emanating from them. All you need to do as a player is find one of these plants if you're running out of air, go near it and it will completely refill you. Players will uncover the fate of the Black Pearl and its crew. And players will take part in an epic battle against a familiar Sea of Thieves enemy in ways never seen before. Bringing the world and the characters of Pirates of the Caribbean into Sea of Thieves is just crazy. Everybody was totally pumped for this opportunity. When Mike sat down and started taking people through, I was able to just sit back and watch people's faces and watching their smiles light up, you know, watching literally tears in some people's eyes as they kind of were taken through the story and all that sort of stuff was genuinely magical. When I first heard about bringing Pirates of the Caribbean to Sea of Thieves, I was here with a spark of excitement that made me feel like a kid again. Just seeing the characters move, but then with the dialogue as well, it started to feel like this is this is actually really, really cool and, and this is gonna be this is gonna be amazing. If I could sum up the project in a single word, I would say incredible. Proud. Magical. Enchanting. Epic. I think the project in a word for me is rare. Every time I see it and uh, hear more of the music or see more of the game or everything. I just think of the studio uh, and it's it's um, incredible. It is, it is a rare game through and through. I'm so proud of the team. I think there's been an incredible amount of hard work and heart and soul that's gone into this project. Incredibly beside myself that it's happening, just this combination of the, these two like sort of pirate passions that a lot of people have. I'm so proud to have been able to work on part of it and to help bring it into being. I think the work we've done is incredible. There's so many cool little references that we've managed to include, and I hope that those resonate with fans of both the ride and of the films. This has been a real labour of love bringing this project to life, and I can't wait to see players' reactions to it. Bringing Pirates of the Caribbean to the Sea of Thieves and seeing those things treated so well, and um, seeing them, you know, such with such authenticity, and and getting to sail alongside Jack Sparrow is just like a dream come true. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to you all hearing about it. I'm looking forward to you all playing it. But to be honest, I can't wait to get my own hands on it. So I'll see you on the seas. Thanks so much for joining us for Sea of Thieves, a Pirates Live Showcase. It's genuinely been amazing to have the opportunity to, to show you in so much detail everything that's coming as, as part of this, but also just how much it means to us as a, as a team and as a studio, and, and for so many members of the Rare team to be a part of this, telling this story and letting you know what's coming. It's, it's been amazing, right? Yeah, this has been a, an unbelievable journey for us. I mean, it's been such an inspiring project to work on. I can't tell you how excited I and the team are to bring this to Sea of Thieves. And, you know, just the scope of content and the way it moves the Sea of Thieves world forwards. I mean, just to recap what you've heard about today, you know, the five tall tales that make up that narrative of Sea of Thieves, a pirate's life. Your chance to embark on this epic adventure with Jack Sparrow, encountering new creatures like sirens, ocean crawlers and phantoms, and exploring the Sea of the Damned and the underwater world of the Sunken Kingdom for the very first time. 
and just how inspired we've been to make it feel authentic to not only our world, but the world of Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, we can't wait for players to get their hands on this awesome piece of content, and we can't wait to see your reaction. Right? And so this is coming free to Sea of Thieves on June the 22nd, which is not long now. Not long at all, and this is undoubtedly the biggest, most impactful update we've ever added to Sea of Thieves. And I think that's it from us. So, as always, we will see you on the seas. Cheers. You will always remember this is the day your crew was joined by Captain Jack Sparrow. To the Sea of Thieves. Quick as you like. Chop, chop. It's time to bridge the worlds and take our rightful places as lords of the sea. Now we have awoken, and we are hungry. Perhaps they'll take me on the grand tour of me, Fallen Kingdom. I was starting to think you'd taken a tumble. Not everyone's as steady on their feet as I am. This is the first place I've found where everyone appreciates my unique uniqueness. They're coming aboard! Keep your crusty claws off me! Davy Jones wishes you destroyed, and I shall oblige him. What is that infernal noise? It's Captain Infernal Noise to you, mate! Spara! Destroy that statue, and there'll be the double to pay! Enough of this! Hear me, my daughter! Come more than me! Whatever they've told you, it's not true. Unless it's flattering, in which case, it's all true, but they left out the best bits. Savvy? <laughs> <laughs>